Here in the Northern Hemisphere, the dark nights are drawing in, and for many of us, the temptation to snuggle up in front of the fire and hang the bike up for the winter can be quite high. But many of us don't want to hibernate all winter long. We want to keep riding our bikes, but to do so, we need to make sure we are seen by putting some lights on our bikes. Now, the selection of lights can be bewildering. So I'm here to break it down for you. Let's get cracking. First up, let's have a look at the law, shall we? So here in the UK, it is actually a legal requirement to use lights on public roads between sunset and sunrise. There's also some rules out there about flashing lights as well. So in Germany, the Netherlands and Australia, you can't actually have flashing lights. They are only allowed on emergency vehicles. There's also some rules in US states where flashing lights at the front aren't allowed. So before you start buying lights, make sure to have a quick Google to know what lights you are allowed in the area you live. Now let's have a look at some options and we're going to start with the front lights. Now in the past 10 years, technology and lights has advanced so much and for as little as 30 pounds or dollars, you can get a light that produces around 500 lumens or for a little bit more money, say 50 pounds or dollars, you can get a light that's close to a thousand lumens. But if lumens don't mean much to you, rest assured, it is a lot of light. And for example, a typical car headlight can produce between 700 to 1,200 lumens. So assuming you can buy a light that is plenty bright enough, the next thing you want to think about is how you mount your light. A light with this much power should come with responsibility too. It's really important that your light is angled in a way that you can see the road in front of you, but also other road users can see you. But at the same time, you don't want to be blinding other road users if you do have a really strong light, because that can be just as dangerous. And we've all been there out in the car and a car's coming towards you and they've left their full beam on and you literally can't see anything because the light is so blinding. To help with this, I suggest that you find somewhere dark facing a wall and you basically have a little play around with the mounting of your lights. You want it so you can see the road in front of you and you don't want it angled up too much so it's blinding other road users, cyclists and pedestrians coming towards you. I'd also strongly suggest having your front lights on a steady beam. The only time I choose to have my light on flashing is if it was quite low visibility in the daytime and you need it to be visible to other road users. Which brings us on to the rear lights. Now there is a lot of debate out there. Should the rear lights be flashing? Should they not? Well, there is actually evidence out there that shows that with your light flashing, you are a lot more visible to other road users. They can spot you from further away, which means you will be noticed sooner. However, there is also evidence out there that drivers find that flashing lights can really affect how far away they think a cyclist is. So one way around this is to simply have two lights on your bike, one flashing and one constant. But however, if you do choose to ride in a bunch, I would stick to a constant light because a flashing light in the face of a cyclist it's going to be quite off-putting. They can be quite strong and dazzling, especially when, you know, riders are sitting on your wheel and that close to them as well. So stick to the constant light. Another thing you want to think about with rear lights as well is where you mount them. It's pointless having a rear light if it is obstructed by a saddlebag or a saggy mudguard or anything that's blocking it. You can also get lights that give off light to the side as well, like this one, um, but also you can get ones that are just directly behind. But the ones that give light off to the side are really good when you come to junctions and cars being able to see you from the side as well. Another alternative to a flashing light could be having a light mounted to a part of your body that moves, so your leg or your heel. This is going to make you more noticeable without having the downsides of a flashing rear light that isn't legal. A study in 2017 actually found that a light mounted to your heel is 1.7 times more noticeable than a flashing rear light. But personally, I would go for both. More the merrier. Have a light mounted to your leg or your heel and have a 
light on the bike as well. Now there are actually overshoe brands that have lights incorporated into the overshoe that can help you be more seen. Another option that is becoming increasingly more popular these days is incorporating lights into bike helmets. So we have this helmet from Met and this is more of a urban bike helmet and it has a light incorporated into the back of the helmet and it pops off nice and easily. You can charge it then just pop it back in and make sure you're seen. But for standard helmets like this one, you can actually get attachments that clip on to the top of your helmet that you can just take on and off whenever you need them. But again, with this one, you need to make sure that is it's angled correctly as well. So you can see, but also people can see you from the rear as well. Now, when it comes to charging your lights and the batteries in the lights, I'd always go for USB charging lights. They are a lot easier and they obviously work out a little bit cheaper than having to buy batteries for your lights as well. You can charge them on the go using a power bank, using your laptop, whether you're in the office having a busy day, you'll always know that you know it's easily chargeable rather than having a battery when you never quite know when it's going to run out and you're always kind of risking being stuck in the dark. So definitely go for the rechargeable U USB lights. A few more little tips that you can do to make sure that you are seen out in the dark is having something reflective on your cycling kit or your clothing or maybe on your bike as well. So then when car lights shine at you, it reflects from the light and they know you're there. But hopefully I have covered most things to do with bike lights in this very video. But let me know in the comment section if I have missed anything, if you have any of your own little tips for riding in the dark share them in the comments and help everybody out and make sure if you did like this video give it a big thumbs up i'll see you in the next one